Hi there, my name is Mike and I am walking to my office this morning. I thought uh, during my commute I would talk to you about the advantages of nearshoring. Um, nearshoring uh, is, a, is a topic that I feel qualified to talk about. Uh, for one reason I wrote a book called uh, Nearshoring to Latin America. It's available on Amazon.com and uh, it has a lot of detail uh, if you're interested. Second, I started a company with two good friends from Mexico uh, called Uno Square and uh, so I run a nearshore company. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to give you, uh, during my walk to the office here, which I hope you enjoy as much as I do, uh, I'm going to give you three great reasons why nearshoring is a great idea. Reason number one, Latin America is cool. Latin America, countries like Mexico, where my company is located, and Costa Rica and Nicaragua, these places are so much cooler than India or China or the Philippines or the Ukraine. It's a fun place to go. It doesn't give me jet lag when I come home. And uh, the people and the location is spectacular. I can walk from my hotel to go get a cup of coffee and I won't be mobbed by 35 beggars ripping at my clothing which has actually happened to me before in India so Mexico is cool that's reason number one reason number two is the availability of resources Mexico just speaking of Mexico alone uh, that country graduates plus or minus about 65,000 English-speaking engineers every year. Those, those, uh, you can see I'm a little bit out of breath going up those stairs, which is not a good thing. I'm not the spry young lad I used to be, which is why I walk to work. But anyway, those 65,000 engineers go from college to working for companies in Mexico like IBM Global Services, Dell, uh, HP, the big Indian companies like TCS and, and others are in Mexico and hiring those people. So there's not as many as what's available in uh, India or China, but there's a lot. So the talent that is being produced down there is usually uh, pretty centered around Microsoft technologies, Java technologies, and a lot of open source technologies. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of availability in Latin America of just solid engineers, support engineers, development engineers, testing engineers, uh, and until we get our education system uh, fixed in the U.S., there's just more available down there than there is here. So that's number two, availability of quality resources. Number three is really cost. Uh, it's not as cheap as, you know, offshore like India or China, but, you know, it's cost of an engineer in Latin America is somewhere around half of what it costs in the U.S. And uh, total cost of engagement after all the expenses in working with a vendor or a partner like my company, uh, it's still about 30% less than if you did it yourself here in the US. With that said, I want to be very clear about something. It's part of my uh, belief system and my culture. If there is an available engineer and you can afford that person in the US, please hire that person. Do not work with me. Do not find people in Latin America or India that's just a dumb idea because we have the best engineering talent in the world in this country and if you can get one of those guys to work on your project or in your company you need to do it if you can't find them or you can find them and you can't afford them 
or hiring them puts your company in jeopardy, then I think you should nearshore. And that's why I started my company. So I hope that helps explain some of the advantages of nearshoring. I'm going to turn around here so that you can see my beautiful office and my commute to work. You're probably jealous, as you should be. It is a gorgeous morning in Oregon, and I am going to get in the office and start working with my customers. Hope you have a great day. Bye now.